Before we get to the context of this uh, chapter today, I just want to make some things right before we proceed on. And the first thing that I want to make it right or maybe make a mention concerning this subject is that this sermon is not for those who do not believe in the Trinity. How's it going? This is Rick, a uh, former attendee of Faith Forward Baptist Church. Um, I wanted to make this video. This is a Trinitarian view. And if you look at this picture and you don't already agree, if you disagree with this picture, you disagree with the Trinity. And that's exactly what the Trinity teaches, that there's three separate persons, but one essence. Three separate persons, but one essence. So the distinctions here is that these three are not each other. So what, so what we have is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we can see that the Holy Spirit is not the Son, the Father is not the Son, and the Father is not the Spirit. These three are not each other. And, and so if you disagree with this already, you disagree with what the Trinity teaches, plain and simple. This is the Trinity. It's three separate individuals, which are not each other. How do you how do you prove how do you prove this wrong is when you can prove that the father is the same person as the son when the son is the same person as the father and when the father is the same person as the holy spirit that's how you can prove this wrong <clears throat> so those are some examples that already just disprove what this teaches but that's that's just the beginning of it i'm going to go into more of the parallels and distinctions the distinction that the trinity teaches is not correct when, when you read 1 John 5, 7, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, these three, er, these three are one. A Trinitarian would say, well, these three are one in the sense that they all share the same God essence. They're not each other, but they all share a God essence. But what we're saying is that these three people are one person. The, the same person that's the Father is the same person that's the Holy Spirit is the same person that is the Son. That is, that is what we believe, and that's what we're teaching. Good evening, brethren. This is Dominique Davis. I'm a former member of Faith of Word Baptist Church. And I just wanted to make this video because, of uh, number one, I just wanted to tell people what I believe, tell uh, everybody what I believe as far as the Godhead goes. And because a lot of people have been asking me about it, people have texted me about it, you know, they want to confirm what is it that you believe. And so this is the point of this video. And also at the end of the video, I just want to address a couple of um, false accusations, some things that has been said and floating around online. And I, I do want to approach those. Obviously, it's way too many to, to uh, attack or, you know, try to defend against. I'm not really, you know, trying to do that. But there's a few that are big to me that I feel like I should address just because there's other people that is involved in these lies. And so I feel like I should, you know, defend against those things. But first off, I just want to start off of what I believe. You know, obviously, I believe that God is one person. Okay. And you know, the, the, the Trinity, the Orthodox Trinity teaches that God is three persons, one God, one essence, you know, and, and that's what makes the three persons God because they are God in essence. But I believe that God is just only one. He's only one person. And I want to just show you from the Bible why I believe that. So let's go to Psalm 2, all right? Because the Bible is teaching us in Acts chapter 4 that the father spake these words by the mouth of his servant David. And the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying, now don't get this verse confused. Just because it's saying the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. Don't get it confused because the one that's speaking is the father. And he's saying against the Lord as if it's not himself. But that's how God often talks throughout the Bible. He always talks about himself as if it's not himself. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but from verse number one all the way to verse seven, this is definitely one thought. You know, he didn't, the father didn't only speak verse one and two according to Acts chapter four. He definitely spoke all the way to verse seven. However, if you haven't noticed, there's a problem here because we have here in verse number seven, the father is saying, I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. Now, the Orthodox Trinity crowd would say, hey, this is the Son of God from eternity past speaking these words because, of course, he's the Son. But 
this is not the per the son is not the person that was speaking this psalm. According to Acts chapter 4, the father is the one that spake this psalm. And we have the father saying, the Lord have said unto me, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Now why would the father be speaking such words? Hmm, maybe because the father knew that he would become the son of God according to Psalm 2. I really wonder how you we uh, you Orthodox Trinitarians was going to wiggle out of this. And don't be trying to do no gymnastics with me, trying to, you know, rest the scriptures and say, well, you know, the first two here is just the father speaking. And then all the rest of it is just David speaking of himself. And, you know, no, the father, according to Acts chapter four, the apostle said, unless you want to call the apostles liars, they said that he spake this psalm by the mouth of his servant, David. Hey guys, Andrew Sluter, pastor of Bible Baptist Church here in Asheville, North Carolina, coming to you with a video tonight on the Trinity. Look at verse 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Why? Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So we're not going to perish because no man can pluck us out of his hand, Jesus' hand. Look at verse 29. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Well, now, wait a second. Are we in Jesus' hand or are we in the Father's hand? Well, the answer is we're in both because they're the same thing. That's why Jesus said in verse 30, I and my Father are one. You see, we're in Jesus' hand, the Father's hand. And he says, I and my Father are one. Now, he's not just talking here about one in purpose or one in, you know, Wheel. He's talking about they are one. They are the same thing. You say, but wait a second. Jesus can't be the Father because he's the Son. How is that possible? He can't be the Father. Well, wait a second. Isaiah chapter number 9 and verse number 6 says this. You've probably read this verse at Christmas time. It's a passage about the birth of Jesus. Prophecy. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God. And here it is, folks. Don't miss it. The Everlasting Father. This is about the simplest you can get it. And, and it's the Father is the Son. The Son is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the Father. And they all three are God. God and, you know, we say God in three persons. No, no, no. It's these three are one. We have the fellowship with the Father and the Son. Therefore, it's clearly showing you that we have the Father and the Son. But many a times those who do not believe in the Trinity will argue saying that we do not have anything to do with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They claim saying that, hey, we only have Jesus who changes himself in different modes. He can choose to be the father. He can also choose at some time to become the son. And sometimes he can also decide to become the spirit. But the Bible says here that we that believe, we truly have the fellowship with the father and with the son. And most of the times these people will go even further telling you, prove to us or show us the word Trinity in the Bible. But again, they will not be able to show you the word the Bible in the Bible. Because unto them, if you are not showing them the word Trinity, then there's nothing like the Trinity in the Bible. And if you challenge them to show you the word the Bible in the Bible, they cannot show you anywhere the word Bible is found in this Bible. You see, Jesus, the Son, and God the Father already had a fellowship. And so when the Apostle is speaking unto us on matters of us having fellowship with the Father and the Son, it is an, inv an invitation that we are being given or we are included in the fellowship that already existed between the Father and the Son. And this is what John 10, 27 says. The Bible says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, 
neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Now, that is just to assure you that as believers, we can never lose our salvation. Because these are the words of Jesus Christ. And you know what Jesus Christ is saying? My sheep hear my voice. So when we have those who oppose the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, I mean, can you ever show me someone who, who does not believe in the Trinity and is saved? Is there anyone that does not believe in the Trinity and is saved? We can never have such guy. Because you know what? You must have to believe that the Son is the one who died on the cross. So if you refuse that, then you are not saved. And so here Jesus begins by showing us that, hey, my sheep, we the sheep hear his voice, and we know him, and we follow him. Verses 28 says, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. He introduces the Father to prove again Trinity. He says, verse 29, My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Mark verse 30, he says, I and my Father are one. So if Jesus the Son and the Father are one, that shows you that these two personalities have what? A fellowship. Because how can two even walk together unless they be agreed? So out of the words of Jesus Christ in John 10, it is already showing you that between the Father and the Son, there is already what? A fellowship. Look down to John chapter 17. So when he says, I and my Father are one, he's simply saying, I and my Father are in a fellowship. You know, I and my wife are one. That is not to say that when I'm in Nairobi town, my wife is in Nairobi town. Because that would be stupidity. Or if my, my wife goes back to Migori, then I will be in Migori. That is not the point. No, it means we have fellowship. We have one interest. We agree on everything that we have agreed upon. Therefore, that is why the Bible says, husband and wife are one. One body. Amen? It doesn't mean that now my wife is walking inside me. When I go to a supermarket, I have my wife there. When I go to the toilet, I have my wife there. That is not the point, but that is what the, those who oppose the Trinity want you to think of. But Jesus is proving unto me and you that, hey, that look, I have the fellowship with the Father, and the Father has the fellowship with me. Remember the apostle is saying that truly we have the fellowship with the Father and the Son, but before we come to even see how our fellowship with the Father and Son should go down, I want you to understand that there is already a fellowship between the Father and the Son, and they all agree. There's no time when they have conflicts. There's no time when they are fighting. There's no time when they are quarreling. They all agree, the Father and the Son. Look down to chapter 17, John, verses 1. The Bible says, These words spake Jesus, and lifted up his eyes to heaven, and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son. What will... A person who opposes the Trinity, what will he tell you concerning John 17? Because the son who has the fellowship with the father is, say, is, is telling the father, hey, the hour has come, glorify thy son. Is Jesus asking himself to glorify himself? No. He knows he has the father whom they have fellowship with. And therefore he's asking the father saying, hey, father, the hour has come, glorify thy son. Let's continue reading. The Bible says that thy son also may glorify thee. Do you see that fellowship? Glorify thy son so that I, thy son, may glorify you. Continues to say, verses 2. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is eternal, life eternal, that they may know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Verses 4 I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Look, Jesus is even proving that he was with the Father before. Jesus is not saying that when I was in heaven I was the Father. 
And then when I came down to earth, then I became the son. Now he's saying I was with the father before. And then because of that fellowship, mutual agreement, because they agree, they don't quarrel, they don't have conflicts. He's telling the father, now it's the time you ought to glorify me and then I will also glorify you. And what is the point? That they may know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Who sent Jesus Christ? The true God. The Father. And you know, I don't know what that guy who does not believe in the Trinity will tell us in this chapter here. And you know I am speaking about that because when you are out doing soul winning, we meet different kinds of people who believe such stupidity. We just met a man who said that, hey, there's nothing like Trinity in the Bible. If you are very keen to read the Word of God and understand and having the Holy Spirit of God, you can't read John 17 and say that there's no Trinity in the Bible. Because it's about, Father glorify me, and then I will glorify you. I was with you from the beginning. That they may know that there's a true God in Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent.